evening. Night number three. You know, we we light the one candle, it's called the shamas, means uh, the servant. And we use that candle to light the other candles. So that on the eighth night of Hanukkah, there are really nine candles burning. And you see, when we use, when we light the one candle and then use it to light the others, it's really always, it's the same flame. We're just moving the flame around. It's not really eight flames. Or tonight, it's not really three or four flames. It's one flame in three or four places. And the other thing that I was telling someone recently um, who is alone during this, you know, COVID time that we're going through, and I imagine there's a lot of people, um, others that are alone like that, is that on a Hanukkah, there's never one candle lit alone. There's always the two. So even the first night of Hanukkah, it's not just one candle that's lit. The shamus is lit and it lights the first night. So there's always two together. Oh, so even if you find yourself feeling alone these holidays um, with Hanukkah and Christmas and we Thanksgiving has been a mess and everything, you're not alone. There's a lot of us out here feeling the same way. You're never, never alone. Amen. <laughs> we may have to start over. <laughs> I'll hold this. You go down. I can't even get it. It's on the other side of the thing. <laughs> There's one right there. <laughs> This could happen to your, yours too. These candles are always wobbling. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kirishanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu Lehat Likner, Shel Hanukkah. So for the third night, we go back to Eric Kimmel's uh, collection of Hanukkah stories called The Spotted Pony. And this one is um, really a family favorite. And when our daughter was little, we had the chance to meet uh, Eric Kimmel over at BookBeat, our favorite uh, store in the neighborhood. And um, Eric Kimmel especially signed Caitlin's book on the page of the Kabil's donkey and told her that it was one of his favorite stories too. So I don't have her copy of it, but I have a different copy, but uh, the Kabil's donkey is one of our favorites. And we shared it with um, Steve's grandmother too, Baba, um, and she loved it too. The town of Hanin lies high in the mountains of Yemen. Jews have lived there since the time of King Solomon. It once happened that the governor of the district appointed a Kabil, a minor official, to take charge of Hanin's affairs. This man's wickedness was exceeded only by his stupidity. He could not bear to see Jews living in peace with their Muslim neighbors, so he set about causing trouble. He summoned the leaders of the Jewish community and told them that he had discovered a forgotten law forbidding, uh, re excuse me, requiring all Jewish orphans to be raised as Muslims. He notified the Jews of Hanin that he intended to begin enforcing the law. Only Marsadia, the teacher at the orphanage, did not express concern. You leave the Kabil to me, he told the children. When a person acts like a jackass, he usually thinks like one. 
Some days later, the Kabil rode his donkey up to the orphanage. He found Marsadia and the orphans sitting beneath the fig tree. I've come for the orphans, the Kabil announced. Marsadia looked around. There are no orphans here, the Kabil scowled. Those children sitting under this tree, they're orphans. They are not orphans, Marsadia said. They are donkeys. What? They're donkeys, Marsadia replied. All the orphans ran away when they heard they were going to be forced to change religions. I had to keep busy, so I started teaching the donkeys in the neighboring field. And after a few days, an astonishing thing happened. The donkeys began to change shape. They didn't look like donkeys anymore. They looked like children. The more they studied, the more like children they became. Unfortunately, the change isn't permanent. So if they ever stop studying, they will become donkeys again. The Kabil could not believe his ears. Can a donkey become a human being? Hmm. Can that happen? Can you do that with that old jackass of mine? Marcedia examined the Kabil's donkey. I'm not sure. That's a stubborn old beast, but I'm willing to try. You leave your donkey here and I'll see what I can do with it. The Kabil was delighted. I'll come by next month to check on the progress. I trust you'll be pleased, Marcedia said. After the Kabil left, Marsadia and the orphans drove the old donkey to the next town. They sold him to the candy merchant for two sacks of halava and one sack of pistachio nuts, and they had a grand feast courtesy of the Kabil. The Kabil came by a month later. He looked over the orphans. Which one of these donkeys is mine? He asked Marsadia. Oh, he's not here. Where is he? What have you done with him? Oh, nothing. Your donkey did it himself. In fact, you should be proud of him. Within a week, he learned everything I had to teach. I sent him to college in Tarim. He graduated last week. The governor came to see this amazing donkey and he was so impressed, he appointed him judge in Demar. I received a letter from him the other day. He sends his regards. He'd like to see you again. He asked you to drop by the courthouse next time you're in Demar. Kabil's head spun. Could such a thing happen? Could a donkey go to college and be appointed a judge? He set out for Damar to see for himself. And when he arrived, he went straight to the courthouse. Now it so happened that the judge and Damar had kind of long hairy ears and seen in just the right light, he looked a little bit like a donkey. Kabil strode into the courthouse and saw what he thought was his donkey seated on the judge's bench. Congratulations, you old jackass, he called from the back of the courtroom. I see you've come up in the world. The judge raised his head. Whom do you think you're talking to? Oh, don't play the fool, the Kabil chuckled. You know perfectly well who I am. You carried me on your back for 15 years. What? And your mother used to sleep in my stable. Insult my mother. You'll pay for this. The judge turned to the bailiffs of the court. Take this impudent rascal outside and cut off his head. The bailiffs drew their swords. The Kabil fled the courtroom with the bailiffs at his heels. Fortunately, he was faster than they were. Even so, he barely escaped with his life. The Kabil ran all the way back to Hanin. He didn't stop until he reached the orphanage. He found Marsadia sitting under the fig tree teaching his donkeys their lessons. Stop what you're doing, stop what you're doing, the Kabil cried. What's wrong, Marsadia asked. Well, you mustn't teach these donkeys anymore. I warn you. I warn you, Marsadia. They are not the gentle beasts they pretend to be. They are ruthless and cunning. I've just escaped from Demar. Would you believe it? My own donkey lured me there so he could cut off my head. No, it's true. Once a jackass gets power, there's no controlling him. I tell you, Marsadia, unless we stop them now, these donkeys will take over the world. There will be no humans left, only jackasses. Oh. I see, Marsadia said. Hmm, but what can I do? I'm, I'm a teacher. I can't sit idle. I mean, who will I teach if I can't teach the donkeys? Oh, call back the orphans, the Kabil said. I learned my lesson. I won't meddle again. And the Kabil was true to his word. From that day on, the Jews and Muslims of Hanin lived together in peace. And Marsadia and the children sat beneath the fig tree, studying their lessons undisturbed. Once a jackass gets power, there's no, there's controlling, no one's him. controlling him. We know this. <laughs> shh, shh, shut up. Uh. That was my favorite, too. <laughs> we'll see you again. Happy Hanukkah, a good evening, and see you tomorrow night.